sure. James has played plenty of games against high span with this team, so we should get to see a fun back and forth, uh, assuming Michael opts to go for that mode. And uh, with Ooh. Iron Crown here, uh, probably a good hint that Ndidi's hiding somewhere. Yeah, Ndidi's probably hiding somewhere, but not out front, which means that Iron Crown is staring down this Wellspring Mask Form Ogre Pond alongside the Gouging Fire. Booster energy is going off for both the Iron Crown and the Gouging Fire, as expected. And it's going to be the Hearth Flame Ogre Pond alongside the Iron Crown. So, really interesting lead sets here. The Gouging Fire and Wellspring Ogre Pond is a fairly standard lead here, but I was not expecting to see Iron Crown next to the Ogre Pond. Yeah, I mean, perhaps uh, giving some options we could pivot either direction, but uh, because of that, also likely going to be a little slower start than maybe if he'd led two Pokemon that synergize more clearly, and that could be tough against James's team. You know, he can pivot pretty well, but also he does have options for increasing his own damage, so they're letting him ramp relatively uncontested would be pretty dangerous. Yeah, absolutely cannot let these players get any kind of uncontested advantage. Here we are in turn one of game one. James is going to protect his Wellspring Mass Form Ogre Pond, going to go ahead and Terrastalize to become a pure water type, and importantly, get the Embody Aspect Boost to boost the special defense. Something that can be very useful to help protect against expanding forces coming out from Iron Crown. No terrestrializations, no switches, just a calm mind. Michael is choosing to use the follow me on his Hearth Flame Ogre Pond to protect the Iron Crown, tank any kind of potential damage from the Ogre Pond or the Gouging Fire, and just going for the calm mind. Really important to note here that the fastest Pokemon on the field now is that Iron Crown, though. Yeah, Ivy Country coming down there, gonna absolutely Ooh. annihilate the opposing Ogre Pond, and uh, James gonna pick up the first knockout in what was otherwise a pretty slow turn. Yeah, I was not expecting a one-hit KO there, and especially not without a critical hit, but the terrestrialization from uh, that Ogre Pond with the Howl Boost from Gouging Fire able to pick up that KO, this Calm Mind had better be worth it. Yeah, I mean, a very boosting themed match so far. Como, pretty excited. Okay, oh, I heard we were boosted. <laughs> I can boost. Uh, I boost. Uh, and Jim's maybe uh, all done boosting, though. And I'm in a position to go on the offense pretty nicely uh, with this advantage he's already built. Como, a great option here against these two physical attackers. And, you know, it will, would take super effective damage from Breaking Swipe, but Breaking Swipe isn't the strongest attack, even with a Howl boost under Gouging Fire's belt. And of course, always has the option to boost its defense with iron defense. And body press, of course, does not care about the attack drop. Yeah, I think one other thing to consider here, too, is that James, like me, probably assuming Ndidi is that final Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So he's got a lot of information now, can start planning the rest of the game because he has almost all the pieces. Well, it looks like a passive start so far protects from both the Iron Crown and from the uh, Ogre Pond. A Heat Crash actually connecting with Komoo as Komoo goes for a Body Press into the Spiky Shield. So the combination of Recoil from the Spiky Shield and from the Heat Crash de dealt a decent amount of damage to that Pokemon. We'll be able to heal up a little bit with the leftovers, but came pretty close to 50% there. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, Como does like to face off against physical attackers, but they're taking all of that damage without getting any boosts up, uh, quickly getting to the point where iron defense is probably mm -hmm. not super realistic in this match. So, uh, you know, James, again, that's very, two very good turns from him. He's now built up a pretty significant edge. Yeah, James, with the, still with his leads of Gouging Fire and Ogre Pond, with both with a Howl boost and no options on Michael's side to remove them with things like an Intimidate, does have Whimsicott, but like you mentioned, showing Iron Crown means almost certainly the Ndidi, which will be coming in right now. Michael has had to choose this moment to go on the offensive. Psychic Terrain will be set up, the Psychic Surge spreading that across the field. Well, Iron Crown has a Calm Mind boost, and now going for even more multipliers. Psychic Terra type on the Iron Crown in Psychic Terrain with a Calm Mind boost. This is going to be a monstrous expanding force. Yeah, we saw more defensive Iron Crown before. This one's going all offense, and Gouging Fire wants nothing to do with it. Yeah, please, please, please leave me alone with the burning bulwark. Iron Crown's expanding force will not do any damage to the Gouging Fire, but will connect with the Ogre Pond, which does have the special defense boost because of the Embody aspect. But with And because of that, even the plus one Iron Crown will not be able to pick up the KO. And instead, this plus one Ogre Pond gets a KO right back. Uh, that's a huge knockout now. 
Uh, that was a very, very important Pokemon to keep on the field if you're Michael. Uh, really impressive mm -hmm. damage, but we kind of see again the consequence of uh, how slowly he led with his lead Pokemon there. Never really gets the Needy and Iron Crown out in the field together. Uh, they make it, you know, on the field for half a turn together, but uh, with the way that played out, you know, no helping hand from a DD, which otherwise would have allowed a 1 hit KO. Yeah. Uh, kind of crazy to think about. <laughs> yeah, through the Embody aspect boost, and now it's just the Como that has taken so much damage from the Heat Crash and the spiky shield previously trying to get something going for Michael. But of course, the Breaking Swipe does not care about the Follow Me. And even though Breaking Swipe is not the strongest attack with the Howl Boost and super effective damage, it still does decent damage to that Como O. Ogre Pond's Ivy Cudgel. Ogre Pond has been so angry this game, picks up a third KO. All three KOs for James has been, have been through this Ogre Pond as Como just tries to go for a raw body press. Get that Pokemon off the field. Michael has no answer for it right now. And uh, unfortunately, it is a little bit too late for this Como O. Uh, seeming like it. I mean, Ogre Pond has tears in those masks, but I think that might actually be from the other team <laughs> uh, doing just an outrageous amount of damage there. And I think that's going to be a huge problem for Michael throughout this set. You know, uh, it just seems like this Ogre Pond does everything for James in this matchup. So it's a pretty easy decision, I think, if nothing crazy happens in the match, just to commit the terrestrialization there. Mm -hmm. They often we see players kind of get punished for doing that. But here, I mean, re realistically, what else you can do? You want the special defense boost. There's a good tight matchup plus these Pokemon. Uh, Michael's going to have to find some answers here. I'm sure he has some because uh, the Wellspring and the Ogre Pond is simply too popular to be, uh, you know, something you can't handle at all. But mm -hmm. that was just an incredible game won by James. Absolutely. James was in control there, was ready for the side spam matchup, and did not allow Como o to get rolling at all. Have to wonder if Michael just played a little bit too passively most of those turns. You know, of course, he went for the Calm Mind but had to sacrifice his own own Ogre Pond to do so. Uh, that was a lot of damage, but not have, and then switching in the Como and not bringing in the Ndidi early meant that it was very difficult to get rolling with the Iron Crown. Of course, James also then showing, revealing his third Pokemon, kind of maybe just an intimidation factor there showing, yeah, I did bring Rillaboom, so <laughs> you aren't safe to just click Expanding Force every time. Yeah, I was ready, I just didn't need to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, here it is, just a series of one-hit KOs from this Ogre Pond on James's side getting the Howl boost from the Gouging Fire, surviving even a plus one Terra Psychic, Psychic Terrain boosted Expanding Force. Ogre Pond was a terror for Michael's team, just did not have enough damage. You know, there are a couple options though. You know, there is the chance of getting a helping hand to get that extra damage. There is a chance of maybe you could sneak in a second Calm Mind to get the extra damage. But again, the Rillaboom in the back means that it's never safe. Yeah, and uh, you know, we're in the uh, Incineroar Free side of the bracket. I think really seeing the impact of not having Intimidate where um, the Ogre Pond is kind of out of control. And uh, this time we see more reasonable pairing here where uh, Michael's gonna be able to get going a lot quicker should he choose to. Yeah, I like this a lot. Michael also never got a chance to click Iron Defense with the Como O. And this seems like a perfect opportunity in front of Gouging Fire and Ogre Pond to start doing so. Michael bringing the Como O and Hearthflame Ogre Pond up against James's same leads, the Wellspring Mask Ogre Pond and the Gouging Fire. You know, Michael went for some body presses earlier instead of in the game one instead of iron defenses and just took damage from Spiky Shield. Now he has an opportunity to start, you know, building up into that unstoppable tank. Yeah, and the howl mattered a lot the previous game, right? I think it's a lot harder just yeah. to howl uh, and not do anything with gouging fire. You'd really like to get a breaking swipe out before there's an iron defense. So between that and now, you know, the option of using a spiky shield and not simply allowing your ogre pond to be deleted, uh, there's things Michael can do from here to really turn things around compared to how game one went. Well, just like in game one, James will go ahead and terrestrialize the Ogre Pond going for the uh, Embody Aspect boost to the special defense. However, like you mentioned, Michael has other options here, hiding behind the spiky shield on his Ogre Pond this time around, not taking any damage from that breaking swipe and instead dealing it right back to the Gouging Fire. And like you mentioned, without the Howl boost already, that 
Breaking Swipe did not do a lot of damage to the Como, but James is not getting baited by this, going for as much damage into the Como as possible. And even still, with the Terrestrialization, that dealt a good amount of damage to Como. Again, more than 50% damage, but Michael at least did get one iron defense up this time. Yeah. James is so good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Michael's probably still not too upset about this one. You're keep on, this again is the Follow Me Ogre Pond, so at least uh, could pull a single attack away, although we've seen how that is likely to end for Ogre Pond in the previous game. Mm -hmm. But I think getting that extra damage for the iron defense is a big deal. It is going to be a difficult Pokemon for him to deal with, but if he's able to knock it out, the remaining Pokemon have a great matchup. And now we see the Howl. I really like how James playing this one. Yeah, James going for the Howl now on turn two instead of immediately. Has the faster Ogre Pond, now does have the Howl boost and the Terrestrialization. We know that's a one-hit KO no matter what. Oh no, little Ogre Pond, not again. <laughs> not again, but at least this time Komuo gets to land the body present. Woo, that's a one-hit KO right back. Komuo get revenge, uh, and that could be a big deal. I think this Ogre Pond you know, is a big part of how uh, James's game plan was supposed to work against you know, Iron Crown and Ndidi. So now James getting a little different solution than what we saw in game one. Mm -hmm. Now, this Komuo has not terrestrialized. Michael has not terrestrialized at all. Bringing in the Ndidi this time around, while actually James will be bringing in the Landorus. Typically, you would want to see a uh, Fluttermane to be immediately threatening or at least forcing the terrestrialization on the Komuo. So potentially uh, showing that there is not a Fluttermane here, if you have to wonder if that's uh, still the Rillaboom in the back. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be my assumption as well. So uh, now we're kind of in an interesting situation where you know, I think Ndidi, uh, you know, gonna not love pulling attacks away, but potentially can do so, help out a little bit here, uh, or maybe just scout things out as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this Como, you know, the Landorus will deal really good damage to the Como. Has the ability to hit it from the special attack uh, option. Indeed, he can redirect every single attack that Landorus has, but over time will be able to be taken down by the Landorus. While Como really only able to fire back with a body press that Landorus will resist. So Michael is just going to try and play it a little bit slowly here to try and get some additional turns of leftovers recovery on the Como. A double protect here as the heat crash comes through onto Ndidi. And then James also going to be able to target down Michael's Pokemon with a Earth Power from the Landorus into the Como. Yeah, so a pretty passive turn there, nothing really happening. And though Michael kind of losing the option to protect either Pokemon now, um, tactically could go for the double, but I can't imagine we'll see it. Um, but does get to heal up a little bit, right? And um, you, know, you kind of mentioned all the damage Landorus can do to Como O. A little more difficult the opposite direction. You know, mm -hmm. uh, only one iron defense, so the resisted body press, not super devastating there. And Ndidi going to do its best to protect it. Yeah, Ndidi just has to go for the follow me here. It takes a heat crash from Gouging Fire, even with the Howl, pr is survived by just a sliver of health, which will be immediately taken away by the Landorus with that Earth power. So Ndidi goes down, it bought Komuo a turn. I hope it was worth it. Body press into Gouging Fire, still not enough damage to pick up the KO there. Komuo will be able to recover a little bit more health using its leftovers. And here comes the Iron Crown. Iron Crown with the booster speed we know is faster than the Gouging Fire, so we'll be able to outspeed and knock it out with an expanding force. But if James brought in, brought the Rillaboom to this match, the expanding force will be significantly weaker. Yeah, I know Winter said it now, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's the problem with the sequencing this direction. Uh, Michael kind of committing pretty hard here, but does get the two sweepers out together, both of them potentially threatening a lot of damage. So this is a difficult situation for James, right? You have to play carefully here, um, could easily lose both Pokemon if he uh, plays recklessly. All right, and Michael targeting the Gouging Fire with the Expanding Force and body pressing into the Landorus, making a call that if the Landorus retreats for the Rillaboom, it will still take the uh, it will still take the body press, but it's going to be the Gouging Fire that retreats in favor of the Rillaboom. So Rillaboom will take this Expanding Force from the Iron Crown. That will be the Pokemon the sole Pokemon on the field that takes damage from Expanding Force because the terrain has been removed. Michael will go ahead and terrestrialize that Iron Crown as well, removing the weakness to the Earth Power and boosting the power of the Expanding Force. 
Again, we've uh, gone from a Psychic Terrain boosted Expanding Force to a Grassy Terrain but Terra boosted Expanding Force on this turn, connecting with the Rillaboom, dealing a good amount of damage over 50%, but again, only to that one Pokemon. And this Earth Power, not quite enough to pick up the KO onto Komoo. And that one Body Press actually doing a significant amount. Still not a two-hit KO, but more than enough for this uh, now Psychic Terra to be able to pick up the KO with an expanding force into the Landorus. Yeah. I can't believe Como survived that. I mean, yeah, that's huge. I think if Como goes down there, uh, it's starting to look really bleak. Instead, it's very interesting. Uh, the down, the other positive of Grassy Terrain, not only have you shut down the expanding forest, but with Real Boom having just entered the field, uh, Fake Out is an option now. So mm -hmm. we have a little interesting turn. You know, can either side kind of just predict things, uh, take a little bit more than they've been given. No protects. No protects. A Fake Out into the Iron Crown, which will be flinching. And Landorus now will be able to pick up the KO onto Como. -o. So Michael went for an aggressive option, not going for the uh, double protect play, perhaps afraid of James being able to get a free substitute with the Landorus if he had gone for that. But instead, that just means this Iron Crown is going to have to try to find some way to make something happen, and I just don't see it with the grassy terrain up. Yeah, Michael had to hit that read right now. There's three Pokemon left uh, without Psychic Train, not able to hit two Pokemon at once, and that's just a lot of potential damage the other direction. Well, Iron Crown going to go ahead and protect itself to get another turn of Grassy Terrain Recovery and hopefully survive this onslaught coming through from the Grassy Glide and then the Landorus as well. There's the Earth Power, so stalled out a turn of Grassy Terrain, healed up a little bit from the uh, Fake Out chip that happened in the previous turn. But Michael is going to need a lot more than that to win this game. Yeah, I mean, it's getting a little scary too, right? If you ignore this Rillaboom too long, maybe you're uh, going to need to hit in an extra time too, and there just yeah. aren't going to be many opportunities to attack in what remains of this game too. All right, well, again, this Iron Crown is the fastest Pokemon on the field. And, uh, you know, there is a world where Michael's able to stall out the grassy terrain and then be the fastest Pokemon, you know, even ignoring priority attacks. Yeah, I mean, maybe this he has to do, right? I mean, and he's got to play this one out. You know, things are looking a little bleak, but uh, the winner of this match will move on to the finals. You know, uh, this is already game two. He's got to win this one to stay alive. Here comes the expanding force targeting down the Landorus. That will deal enough damage to pick up the KO on that Pokemon. No grassy glide, though, which means that this Rillaboom is going to be able to fire back with a wood hammer in the grassy terrain. Meadow Plate boosted. That's enough for a KO. And James cleans up game two and advances to his second finals in a row. Masterful performance there, right? Uh, neither game ever in too much doubt. He just really played that match well, um, traded perfectly, and uh, really impressive performance, right? A little little different approach game one and game two where uh, Michael adapted well, I think at least made the game closer, 